This is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Let me get closer to the microphone and with the playing of our familiar and with the playing of our familiar theme song is the beginning of what we call the ramble here at the Alex Bennett program. Uh, that's our alternate title for it. And uh, we go until midnight tonight. And a little bit later, we're going to have our citizens panel. We're going to discuss all kinds of things, have all kinds of fun, try and get ourselves into all kinds of trouble. But in the meantime, uh, yeah, as usual, uh, we got a guest. We now go out to California where the sun is always shining because Larry Bubbles Brown lives there. I live in the one place in California where it doesn't shine, but we do have lovely fog. You know, I just I that's what I love about San Francisco. I often said it's the world's most air conditioned city. All right. Uh, you know, you can have a hot day, hot is eighty degrees, and then that evening it's like fifty three. The the fog comes rolling in and it's like somebody turned on the air conditioner. Yeah, I can go from ninety to uh, freezing in uh, in an hour. I think. Now you know you managed to stay living there, in spite of the fact that the rents have gone sky high. Because what you're you're under rent control or something? Rent control, yes. Which I think you have in New York too. Well, well we uh, we it, 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 it there was rent control. Then they changed that to rent stabilization. Um. And a lot of people, for instance, in the building I'm in, have rent stabilization, and a few people have rent control. I mean, I met one woman who says, I've lived in this building since 1935. I was born in this building. And what <laughs> happens is they, they get to keep rent control. And rent control means that you pay really low rent, okay? But more than that, if you die, your relative can get the rental. Okay, so the rental, uh, we have a woman on the first floor whose, uh, who, whose relations have passed it on to her finally after all these years, and she had to go to court and fight it. Uh, but she uh, she's paying like, you know, I don't know what the rent would be un- under rent control, maybe under $1,000 for like a 12-room apartment. Well, that would be a huge asset, Jesus. Yeah, it really is, so. Uh, you know, I mean, uh, but but in San Francisco, you have rent control, and mm-hmm. they can only raise it just so much every time, right? It's like it's like one something percent a year. Yeah, it goes up about ten or twelve dollars a year. Yeah. So when you first moved in there, how much was it? It was two. When I moved here in eighty two, it was two fifty. It was two fifty, and now you're yeah. paying a little over twice that. Two fifty. You're paying uh, about six hundred. Let's say. Yeah. Yeah. Wow, that's pretty good. I guess, yeah. I'm, I'm living in the '80s, so my <laughs> I mean, they're waiting for you to die. Well, there's uh, there's 12 units in the building. And four, three other people have been here longer than I have, so they're paying less. Um, wow, wow. And it's a studio, is it? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Is that is. Well, that... I feel trapped. There's not a lot of room here, so I don't like to stay here. I... Just a place to sleep, pretty much. Yeah, and that's the life of a comic, ladies and yeah. gentlemen. The wonderful, <laughs> devil may care life of a person trying to make his way in show business. And you had that nice big apartment not too far from me. I had a big apartment. It wasn't that big, but I had two of them within. You had two side by side, and I all I had to do was walk across like what was a fire escape thing, you know, back stairwell was what we used to call it. And I just walked across and from one kitchen to the other kitchen, and there I was. So I, I literally had two apartments. That was great. And one I used as an office, and one I used as a, uh, as, as a living quarters because I decided that I was using my living quarters as, a, as an office as well and that it would just be better if I went somewhere else and just made a rule I wasn't going to do any business out of there. You know, I was going to live there. So for the most part, it was just an apartment, you know. And um, uh, 
it, it cost me more than the original one, but between the two of them, I was paying twenty three hundred dollars. <laughs> yeah. So well, they'd be about, from what I understand, they'd probably be close to four thousand each now. Really? Yeah. Oh, boy. Well, I'll tell you, th- prices have gone up on everything, and unreasonably so. I have a thing I use here called Log Me In. Now, I would try to explain to you how it works, but since you're not a computer guy, I'm not going to explain how it works. But basically what it means is I can operate the computers in this house from anywhere in the world. All right? Wow. So when I first bought the program, uh, they had a special, $49 for a year. I went, that sounds good to me, you know. And so I use it for uh, uh, programming the network, and some of my other people can phone in using it and drop their stuff on the on the computer for me, so that I have their file of their program. This forty nine bucks. Well, the next year I knew it was going to go up because that was like a half price deal, and it was ninety nine dollars. Right. The next mm-hmm. time it was a hundred and fifty dollars. This is a year later. I just get a thing. Uh, we're going to renew in 15 days at $249. And I'm thinking to myself, really, have they put that much money into this program that they really <laughs> can justify raising it to 249 But they got me by the, by the cur- yeah. curlies because I, you know, I'm, I'm invested in this program, so I guess I have to go 249 I mean, if you think about it, it's only 20 bucks a month, you know. Uh, but uh, still, that's what I mean about things are just costing more and more. Uh, drugs start costing more and more. Uh, I went to Costco yesterday, or day before yesterday, to buy my normal supplies. And I don't buy meat there anymore because the meat prices have gone through the roof. And that's at Costco. I mean, I, yeah, food. Uh, I notice when I go to Safeway, just everything is going up. Seems like every week. Yeah, I mean, but especially like meat prices. So what I've found is rather than buy you know four steaks that I've got to buy at a time at Costco, uh, I'll just go out and just buy the steaks individually because I've always had steaks left over that got you know I didn't eat, right? Uh, so uh, I'm buying my meat now at local grocery stores and just buying the portions for, for my girlfriend and I, my wife and I, uh, and and uh, doing it that way because the prices have just gone berserk, even at Costco. You know, so the only thing at Costco that hasn't gone up in price since I first started going there, the the roasted chicken, the thing they put on the spit and then sell. Is still only <laughs> is still only four dollars and ninety nine cents. That's a Kirkland chicken. It's a Kirkland chicken, <laughs> yes. Uh, it, 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 but it's it, it's uh, it's a uh, uh, you know it's 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 the I think the biggest selling item at Costco because everybody wants that four ninety nine. Ch- I buy a four ninety nine chicken even if I'm not going to eat it. <laughs> that is cheap. No. That is very inexpensive, and uh, there's one other thing that's there. there oh, and there uh, the second most selling thing at Costco is their toilet paper, their Kirkland toilet paper. Wow! Yeah. Okay, that's a good trivia. Well, I mean, no, but everybody needs toilet paper, you know. So if you're going to go there, you you're gonna you know you're gonna you're gonna do that. Uh, you, you know, so you have the Kirkland toilet paper, and uh, I uh, had to get my wife used to Kirkland. She used to like to use uh, what? What's that toilet paper? Uh, Charmin? She, no, no, not Charmin. But the one every everyone's wrapped in paper. Uh, I'm trying to remember the name of it now. But anyway, every roll is wrapped in paper, and I'm going. You know, what a waste of paper. You know, you just want to get like Charmin comes in a plastic thing and you open it up and you take out a, a roll. Here you had to unwrap every roll you were going to use. But she liked that paper. And I said to her, but we should buy it at Costco. It's cheaper at Costco. 
the, the Kirkland toilet paper. I don't want Kirkland. I don't like. I, I'm not going to like the way it feels on my ass. <laughs> so we're out in California, and we're using. A fr- we're in a friend's apartment, and we're using the bathroom. And I said, uh, "How do you, how do you like the toilet paper?" She says, uh, yeah, "It's good. It's fine." And I opened up the door where they kept all the toilet paper, and there it was, Kirkland. <laughs> I said, Kirkland toilet paper. You like it? Yes. Then that's what you're going to use from now on. And she's been used to it ever since. She doesn't mind the Kirkland toilet paper. But up until that point, she wasn't about ready to go with the Costco toilet paper. And the thing about Costco is they all have this Kirkland brand, but the Kirkland brand is usually made by the toilet paper company that it's next to. You know? And uh, so they make their own toilet paper. And they say they have worked on that toilet paper to make it the best toilet paper in America. Very well, there you go. Saving a bundle. Yeah, saving a bundle and not chafing my ass. So. Yeah, getting a lifetime supply. Yeah. That's the thing yeah. about uh, getting older. You really start to worry about uh, running out of money, I think. Uh, you do start worrying about running out of money. Uh, and uh, my wife can worries about running out of toilet paper. That's the problem. <laughs> she always goes, "Oh, we need more toilet paper." I say, "There's still seven rolls of it left in the uh, in the bathroom." Well, yeah, but we're going to run out. You know, you can't buy enough toilet paper. Women hoard toilet paper. Yeah. Well, well but you, you can't run out of toilet paper uh, because you you could buy twenty. Reams or whatever those you know, the things are with sixteen each, and in, in, in you could buy twenty of those, and eventually you'll get through them. It's not an item you're not going to use, and it's not an item that spoils. I'm going Good to the point. toilet paper business in my next <laughs> life, and everybody needs it. You know, it's not like you make toilet paper and people go, "Ah, we don't, I don't need." Do we need toilet? No, we don't need toilet paper. We'll just use our fingers as usual. You know. If no, you came you'd... up with an alternative, but toilet paper, you can make a fortune because you're right. Everyone needs it. Is there? A, uh, don't they have things like bidets and stuff like that? Well, that's just for women to clean their vaginas. Yeah. 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 You won't get a man to use that. Did, haven't they tried to come out with uh, with toilet paper substitutes? Like, uh, well, there's the toilet paper that's pre moistened. I kind of like those. I haven't uh, tried those. Yeah, uh, because it it tends to wa- you know as you're using it, cleanse your behind. Are we getting too graphic this, here? Maybe too scatological here. Too scatological. Yeah, yeah. Let's you, talk about. We could go back to the Oscars, or <laughs> I actually had a question about the Oscars for you. Do you have, a, you, know you, have a, you have an Oscar question? Okay, here comes Larry Bubbles Brown, who's going to ask me a question. Okay, and, and, is, and I found that I by accident I found that great trivia question about the Oscars about the uh, the four best supporting actresses. Yes, four years in a row had the same initials. Yeah, but uh, Mer- the see, uh, Meryl had, Streep, it, Maureen. St- wait a minute, Mer- Meryl Streep, Maureen Stapleton. This was all in a row, from uh, seventy-eight to eighty-one. Yeah, uh, uh, a Mary Steenburgen. Mm-hmm. Really? Yeah. That's the one no one ever gets. That's the one nobody ever gets. Uh... What's the other two MSs? Uh, no, you, you got you got you got Steenberg and Stapleton and Streep. Yeah. One more. There's two more, right? No, you got you got those three. I I got those three. Those you said, you said Streep, yeah. Yeah. So, but well, I can't remember the other two now. Um. Uh, oh boy. Oh, uh, a British actress. Yeah. You, uh. Um. Oh, what was the British actress's name? I forget. What are the other two? It's Maggie Smith. Maggie Smith. And there's Maggie one... Smith, uh, stage, Maureen Stapleton, Meryl Streep, and uh, Steenbergen. Oh, it was just four of them? Yes, four. Four in a row. And they were all yeah. in a row. They were one Seven, year. 78 to 81, yeah. And was this was like, uh, this is for what? Stapleton was for Reds. Yeah. Steenbergen was for, I think, Melvin and Howard. Yeah. And then I, Streep was for I don't know. But I'll tell you that those are oh Deer Hunter. 
Uh, could have been, yeah. It was or or nice. or Kramer versus Kramer. Yeah, okay, it was. It had to be one of those. Yeah, but 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 none of these were best actress. These were all best supporting actors. Supporting actress, yeah. Wow, that's amazing. That is t- truly amazing. But now you I, you have. I found it by accident, so I just. Yeah. So now you have the, another the, Oscar. The question. question I had for you, and it always seems to be, it seems like it's uh, shrouded. You never hear much like the P, the Academy votes for the, uh, P, but they never show the results of the vote. So how do we really know, you know? And how many people actually vote? Oh, wait a minute. Oh, but what was the question? Wait, who was the, were they voting for best Oscar, or for best actor, best picture? How many people vote? How many people vote? I, I, God, how many people are in the Academy? I think it's over 10,000, but I'm not sure. Oh, it's that many. Oh, okay. No, wait a minute. Maybe it's less. Uh, because not everybody, you know, is a member. Just because you work the movie industry, you're not necessarily a member of the Academy. It's like I was a member of the Television Academy. Um, I had to join. That's the reason I won. If I didn't join, I couldn't get an award. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, but I belonged to that for a couple of years. But it, it, that was pretty easy to join. But I hear with the Academy, with the Oscars, you have to have like three or four people like vouch for you or something. I don't, I don't know what the qualifications are. I could look it up here. I tried to look. I couldn't find much about it, and, and, the, Qual- and they, 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 they never show the results of the voting either. Right, right. Um, um, qualifications for motion picture up. Oh, come on. Oh, fuck you. Picture. Um, uh, Academy. Okay. Uh, oh, son of a bitch. Qualification of motion picture. How, how to become a member of the Motion Picture Academy of Arts and Sciences. Membership reviews take place once a year in the spring. Our current deadline for all proposals is March. Uh, let's see, who? Academy membership is limited to film artists working in the production of theatrically released motion pictures. The Academy has 17 branches for the crafts ranging from actors to writers and two categories, members at large and associates to accommodate individuals who work in motion picture production but do not fit into any of the branches. The requirements for each branch and uh, uh, the process is by sponsorship, not application. Candidates must be sponsored by two Academy members from the branch to which the candidate seeks admission. Okay, that pretty much explains it. Mm-hmm. You know. So, folks, that's, you, you got to be connected. But yeah, you got to know somebody. It's like the Friars Club. You can't join the Friars Club unless you have, I think, two people who uh, sponsor you. Uh, you got to know <laughs> Kipadada and... Uh, yeah, Kipadada, yeah. Oh, man. <laughs> well, there was that one year, the uh, the best actress, it was a tie, remember? It wasn't, it, was it Streisand and... Was there, yeah, there was a tie, wasn't there? One year, yeah. And I can't remember. Um, but uh, I'm, I wonder how many members there are of the Academy. How many members? How many? See, just members. Uh, members in, um, uh, let's see here, in uh, Motion Picture Academy. Okay, in the Motion Picture Academy. Uh, uh, the Board of Governors consists of 51 members. Um, in 2016, the Academy invites 683 to membership. How to become a member? Unveils. Uh, let's see here. It doesn't say how many. Uh, 
The roster of academies approximately 6,000 motion picture professionals is a close, closely guarded secret where the great majority of the members are based in the United States. Membership is open to qualified filmmakers around the world. So there's another answer to your question. Okay. Basically, it's an organization that says, fuck you, if you want. <laughs> it's a little, a little secretive. Yeah, a little, 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 little secretive. Any other questions you have? About? <laughs> that was it. You the, see, I mean, I act like I know all, but I just go to Wikipedia and get the answer. Go to yeah. I would just Google. like like when they uh, when they announce the winners, I would just it'd be nice if they actually showed the vote totals or percentages or something. Yeah. But you I have no idea. I love Google because Google solved some of the greatest problems in my life. Uh, the Huh? 20 years ago, it had taken us uh, three days to research this. No, I'll tell you what, what happened uh, the other day. I had a, uh, my, all of a sudden, my dishwasher wouldn't work. You push all the buttons, none of them would light up. Nothing. So now I'm going, I'm panicking. I'm calling, you know, people who fix dishwashers. And they're saying, well, here's the price. It'll cost us a hundred, it cost you 150 bucks for us just to come out and look at it. So I said, okay, I'll call you up. I'll call you back. I go online. One thing says, push this button and this button and this button. But I didn't have those buttons on my dishwasher. So I'm, I look again how to reset your dishwasher. And it says, turn off the electricity. Unplug the electricity and then replug it in. And if you can't find out where to unplug it, just go to your fuse box or your switch box and flip the switch off and then back on again. And I went and did that, and guess what? The dishwasher started working. And I just thought, I just saved 150 bucks. So when my wife got yeah. home, I said, you owe me $150. She said, for what? I said, I fixed the washing machine. <laughs> I was looking up prices of new washing machines, you know, things like that. So as a Jew, I was very proud of myself. Because Jews basically don't fix stuff. We leave that to the... We call a Gentile. Right? Maybe they should call it... Maybe they should call it Jugal. Jugal. <laughs> yes. So anyway, that, that seems to be a... Uh, for a lot of things, if you just turn the power completely off and then back on, that'll help a lot of things, I've noticed. Well, I mean, I, I forgot, you know, I, I, when I think of a dishwasher, I think of a mechanical object. But I forgot that actually today they're as much a computerized product as anything else. You know, they do have a circuit board in there. They do have a memory board. And, 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 and that whenever Marjorie says to me, oh, my computer isn't working, I say reboot. And when you reboot, it's usually okay. You know, nothing wrong with it. Except yours, yeah. because yours is 87 years old. <laughs> with XP. With XP. With you still have XP. <laughs> I'm afraid this thing it probably has so many viruses on it. <laughs> that, that you could get syphilis just by touching it. <laughs> just by logging in. You can get three <laughs> venereal diseases. Yeah. Uh, that, that's amazing you've got XP. Although that wasn't a bad operating program. There's no, nothing. guys I talked to that know computers say they, that was one of their favorite ones. Oh, I, and, to uh, me, XP was the best. Uh, but uh, nothing works with it anymore. Any new programs you might want to use will go, hey, I'm sorry. You know? No, they, they don't offer any support. And they, they, half the websites, I can't, they, they won't let you log on to them if you're on XP. Yeah. And, of course, uh, uh, do you have a smartphone? No, no. I got a flip phone. It, no. Yeah. One of those old Motorola flip phones? Mm-hmm. God, you... I, I I don't know if I should talk to you anymore. <laughs> you you are so living in another century. I'm a luddite. I mean, it, it's not even a luddite. It's like you have a flip phone. Do you know how, <laughs> how old is that thing? It has to be at least twenty years old. It's twelve. It's twelve years. It's old. It's twelve years old. Oh, I see. Yeah, they still did have flips. Yeah, works very yeah. good. You can actually text on it, but it takes because you have to hit the. There's, you can do three letters per <laughs> key, so you kind of you take a long time oh, to God. say hello. Larry, Larry, I got to get out there for no other reason. <laughs> I know. It's not to visit San Francisco, but to get you into this century. 
Hell, I'll, I'll bring you one of my old computers. That uh, oh, get out here and still, set me up because the dial-up's driving me crazy. The dial-up is driving you crazy. You, you don't know what you're missing. But then again, because you don't know what you're missing, you're probably not missing anything. Hey, we've run out of time once again, my dear friend. Oh yes, yes. Another another delightful time. I love talking with you because you know it's my excuse to talk with yeah. somebody, and and you're a great backboard. Just and you know me. everything, so I like to talk to you. Yeah. So because we're the two smartest people in the universe, <laughs> we enjoy each other's company. Ladies yeah. and gentlemen, he's Larry. He's Bubbles. He's Brown. He's Brown. Mm-hmm. All right. American Broadcast Network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Well, I certainly, uh, I certainly screwed that up. Here, play that, play that again. I had the thing down here. here. This is GabNet, yeah. the Great American yeah. Broadcast Network. Yeah. Talk like you've never heard it before. Uh, there we go. Yes. Uh, how are you? I'm gonna, I'm gonna I'll pull my shirt out. You know, I, my my shirt is always going in now because I've um, I've lost so much weight that when I just cinch up my pants, the, the the shirt automatically goes into the pants, and so I usually always wear them. And now because I'm getting older, you know, the pants you wear them a little higher because it, I, they, the, if you wear them lower, they fall off. So uh, it's it's a whole deal. It's a whole schmageggy. Anyway, let me get rid of uh, the music panel thing here. And put up the other thing. Uh, I was on the doing stuff with uh, with uh, uh, live stream for most of the day today, uh, but finally tonight they I had them uh, using um, God something I haven't used in a long time. Uh, what's the name of that program? I, mean, I, I got to remember it again because I completely forgot it. I, Team Viewer. And they, they came onto my machine and started playing with it to see what was wrong. And, you know, that was it. Anyway, here, here's the guy who never listens to the first half hour of the show. And so he, then he doesn't know what the hell we're talking about. Uh, it's, it's Mike, ladies and gentlemen. Wait a minute. Hold on a second. I keep pushing the wrong buttons today. There we go. There we go. There's, there's Mike. Hi, Mike. Hey, how you doing, Alex? How are you? Okay. What would you call about? Oh, Trump and his uh, party of uh, your holes. Y- yeah. Is that it? That's about it. <laughs> well, I'm waiting for uh, Phil to come on so I can give him a hard time. But you don't give him a hard time. You never give him a hard time. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, you don't give him a hard time. You, you're, you're, you're kind of a coward in that respect, I would say, you know. So, Phil, call quickly so I don't have to keep talking to Mike. <laughs> How's the weather back in New York? Warm? Oh, it's gotten to that. Huh? That's how boring the show has gotten. How's the weather in New York? <laughs> Is it warm? Yeah, it's warm. It's hot. How hot is it? So hot that, you know, whatever. So, anyway, folks, uh, you know how to do this, don't you? What you do is you call... Um, well, you can use Skype. You can use Skype. That's a good way of doing it. And Skype, uh, uh, you simply go to Gabnet uh, Live is our uh, ID. Or if you need the phone numbers or you need a way to get on and you want to find out how to do that, then just, you know, uh, go to Gabnet.net and everything is there to tell you how to do it. We've been joined by Phil Meyer. He is always... The second guy to call. It's either Mike first or Scott Boddicker first, and then you. Then. Uh, the secret word is toilet paper. Toilet paper. Why? No, it's called Republican shitheads. No, 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 no. It's the first half hour. The first half hour is toilet paper? Why no, Why discuss- is the first half hour my sh- discussion with uh, Bubbles? After then, you went into, uh, uh, you know, just to prove that I was listening... After toilet paper, you talked about uh, technology. Oh, okay. Uh, you talked about um, uh, the getting well, you don't, into you the, don't actually uh, the talk, actors' guild. You don't actually talk technology with with bubbles. You kind of are amazed at the things he doesn't know and the things he doesn't have. 
It's the Larry Brown Museum of Technology. Yeah, basically. Yeah, you know, I have an old, I have an old, I have an old PC here that's not really in great shape, but if I gave it to him, it'd probably be better than anything he's got there right now, you know. That's but true. then I have to have him go out and get dial-up. I mean, uh, um, uh, uh, what do you call it? Uh, the cable, the cable, or, or, or cable mode, or DSL line, or whatever. And it's fifteen he, bucks a month, I think, for a DSL line. For a DSL line, well, they're cheap, but I'm I'm talking about you know getting your internet connection, your normal internet connection. He's never had one of those. He never knows well, the concept of just turning on your computer and it's already online. Yeah, he's still using a three hundred baud coupler. And what's strange about that concept is that's a concept I had to learn. Are you ready for this? Something like thirty years ago. Yeah. Yeah. You know, so no, he, that's is, how is far he behind a, he is. You know, one of those phone couplers where you take the uh, no, the old no, phone no, no, no. He, he, the... Wait a minute. Hold on a second. Does he? I don't is that like think three hundred odd. So. It's well, it's hooked to his phone line somehow. I, I'll yeah. have to ask him next time whether he actually puts the thing in a coupler. <laughs> well, how do we do it, uh, Rob? At before, uh, after couplers? What was was it? Your phone was hooked directly in. No. No, um, you, that's when you had modems, regular like, you know, the modem card in the back of the machine. The coupler. Oh, when oh. I was a kid, I oh. was at grammar school. Oh right, your your your, your line went, your phone line went into the modem, and then yeah, your, in, then your phone went, came out of the modem. Right. You, you know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's 20, was 25 years ago. Right. And now that's 25 years ago. That's what he has. Wow. You know, wow. do you know anybody, Scott, just joined us, do you know anybody who doesn't, who has dial-up any longer? No, nobody. According to Bubbles, though, in San Francisco, 20% of all the people who have internet connections are dial-up. In a high-tech Silicon Valley area, really? Yes. That just doesn't, wow. If that, it's there, it must be... No. It must be a, a national a number then. What are you? What are, you're going to disagree? You're going to? I don't think so. <laughs> I don't really think so. It would seem I to me I, that it would seem it, to me though that it, it, in a high tech area like right outside San Francisco yeah. or San Francisco in general, if if twenty percent of the people have dial up still, then you're going to find that pretty much across the country. Yeah, there's still dial up. Well, that's according to Bubbles. Now, maybe Bubbles is trying to make himself feel good. You know, he he may be using uh, old data. <laughs> yeah, which is it, 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 and his 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 dial up is so slow. He just got the information. Yeah, <laughs> maybe he got it off the bulletin board. Scott, did you want to say oh, something? Oh God! Well, I I thought I heard on the radio today that the number sounds unbelievably wrong, but like a hundred million people in the United States don't have access to high speed internet. A hundred well, million. I a hundred million. Country. I know that seems outrageous. I, don't believe I find that true. number number astronomically high. Yeah, yeah, that's what it sounds like to me too. But that, I'm swear that's the number. But I heard it could say. well be. I mean, there's some people who probably don't have internet connections at all. That that's well, this just, you're sorry. Smoke, so oh. I assume they could still well, be doing. Well, wait a minute. Wait a minute. We <laughs> have, wait a minute. How many people do we have in the country now? Three hundred million, close to that. Yeah. yeah. Hi, hi, uh, Patrick. Um, or let's start calling him Pat. Okay. Uh, <laughs> you don't care. It's Pat. It's been, here comes Pat. Yep. Oh, wait a minute. Where is that? Do I still have that uh, theme song here somewhere? Uh, yeah, because uh, we can play it every time. In 2015, yeah. 2.1 million people still used AOL dial-up. Really? Oh, my God. You mean they're still in business? How many, how many yeah. used dial-up? Uh, in, uh, AOL in 2015, 2.1 million. Uh, now there's another one here that says actually 9.4 million mm -hmm. uh, use dial-up connections. So uh, uh, so AOL's got mo uh, a good portion of them, but uh, it says that uh, 9.4 million people still use dial-up really? in the country. Son of a bitch! Oh, by the way, since uh, since uh, Patrick is here, I, I now have a theme for him. Here we go. A lot of people say, "What's that? It's Pat." Here comes Pat. <laughs> and then you say something 
amazing, Patrick. <laughs> oh. Start Your uh, audio's off, I think. No, his his audio always starts low, and then as he talks, it comes in for some reason. It's some. No, intentional. Started it. It started like drum roll. You are kind of low tonight. Muffled. I'm short. I'm in a wheelchair. What do you want? <laughs> <laughs> Hug your computer. Yeah. Well. Anyway. Um, so so we've got what? How many do they say? Nine million? Did they say? Uh, yeah. Nine. Uh, let me. Nine point four million. Now, let's see. The date on that is December of two thousand sixteen. Really? Yeah. Son of a bitch. That's hmm. Six months ago. Yeah. So if um, so that's five percent of the United States, oh, well, three hundred thirty million people. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know what what the number of all internet connections are. Yeah. Uh, but um, they're using fifty six k modems. <laughs> oh, uh, yeah, amazing. That is amazing. Is that faster than two G? Uh, no, so. no, I don't think so. Um, I'll, I'll look up how many internet connections there are in the United States. Yeah, because it seems to me, well, wait a minute, we have 300 million, let's say we have, what is it, 300 million now, is that how many? 330. 330. 330. 330 million people. Now, to begin with, many of those are families. So right. it's one interconnect, internet connection, and they're like three people, or they're four people. So, you know, uh, uh, Seventy-eight percent of the population uh, uh, have uh, internet connections in the U.S. Eighty-one in the United Kingdom, forty-nine in Russia, and thirty-eight in China. Yeah. Uh, let me see if I can find the statistic on how many that is. Uh, well, there's it's, it's, two hundred ninety million internet users in China. So, no, in oh, the U.S. Two hundred ninety internet million. Two hundred ninety million. Internet, internet users. users. Uh, let me see if I can. Uh, Out of 330, the rest have to be the very old and the. Very oh no, they're young. connected. There's only 78 percent of the U.S. is connected to the internet. How many? How much? 70. 78 percent, according to the article I just saw. 8%. And uh, it's Pew Research. So does that in does that include when they say connected? Does that mean high speed connection? Uh, no, that's just connected. Uh, of, of, because of would the, you consider a, a 56k modem a connection? Like yes. we're all we're all connected 24/7 in right. our high speed. Well, but if uh, you're if you have a 56k modem, would you say that's connected or not? Well, nine million people are connected that way, <clears throat> or uh, as, and uh, of the 78 percent of the population uh, that uh, they're connected in one way or another. Nine they million rubbed, connected yeah. with a fifth, you know, with a, a dial-up. Wow! So we still have dial-up out there. Question for Rob. Yeah. Yep. Do you think if you went to the mobile versions of most internet websites, the 56k wouldn't be that bad? Because uh, they're a lot less graphic content. No, what? I think they would be terrible because you just step up from like a. From the old, uh, from what is it now? It's uh, what do we call it? Uh, LTO. What is it called now? They just no, like, yeah, the the old versions of the internet. Fifty six K is like deathly slow. Yeah, you could be waiting ten minutes for. Yeah, uh, I, I think regardless, oh, okay. of, that, it probably wouldn't work. For we no. when we were doing when we were doing um, uh, play TV, uh, we had two different signals we sent out. One was 56K for video. And mind you, that was a tiny postage stamp sized picture that if you wanted to blow it up, got really blurry, <laughs> okay? And we did have a 300K uh, uh, signal, which was much better. That was living large so far as we were concerned. Uh, but today, uh, what people are watching here is quite a bit more, you know. I mean, this is, I, I can't remember how fast this is, but it certainly is faster. On the other end, Sony and IBM just are coming out with a magnetic tape storage, 
that one small cartridge fit in your palm of the hand, 330 terabytes. Magnetic? Uh, yeah, I used going to, back to magnetic that's, cable. Well, I think it's that's going to be, cable. that'll be so slow okay. and clunky. Well, Just think the about it. It's a, for overnight storage and long-term storage. It's for archiving and stuff like that. Oh, so it's not for storage. It's for data yeah, it's, protection. It's, it's, it's bigger than any hard drive that's currently right. in, in, in that, use. But that's it's, considered... it's for like the Social Security Administration, IRS, right, um, right. That's, big corporations. Right, that's offline. And, and, and the Wayback Machine. I'm sure they need one. The Wayback yeah. yeah. Wow. So it was so uh, we do uh, so if we're saying that there are nine million dial-up users, that's not twenty percent. That's what percentage would you say? Uh, uh, well, out of uh, and, and you see when we say users, when we say users, are we? If, if you've got four people in a family, is that considered one user, or is it considered uh, no, four about users? Population. Uh, so they said two hundred ninety million. Are connected or have now, access to or have access yeah uh, in the U US and uh, of those 290 million nine of million of them are on dial-up and two million of them use AOL <coughs> and, and they're talking about people with access not I mean does an infant have access yeah does an infant yeah. use the internet no no well, so they're they, talking about if you have a like although I don't know if you've seen some two-year-old kids with an iPad well yeah. I, they but. may be great at it, but I, uh, they don't think they're not on the internet with it. Right. Well, they could, you know, they they could be playing those uh, war games and so and so forth. You know. Yeah. Or downloading porn. Down, yeah. Don't downloading porn. Very early. I, if I had a kid, that's the first thing I teach him how to do is how to download porn. Yeah. <laughs> you know. Good uh, parenting. The good yeah. parenting skills. Yeah. No, I'll tell you though. I gotta tell you. Years ago, I I learned a great lesson. I had two friends um, uh, who ran a thing called the Living Theater, uh, Julian Beck and Judith Molina. Uh, you may remember Julian Beck because he was the really, did you ever see Cotton Club and remember the killer, the kind of the really, and he was also in uh, po Poltergeist as well. And he wasn't really, he didn't want to do movies. He was a very, the Living Theater was a very she-she, far out acting group. And he never wanted to do movies, but towards the end of his life, when he found out he had cancer, he decided to make as many movies as possible so he could leave Judith, his wife, uh, a bit of money. So he did Poltergeist, and he did Cotton Club, and I think he did, Pol he did Poltergeist 2, and then I think he did Poltergeist 3. You know, he, he would do anything that anybody wanted to do, and then he dropped dead, okay? Judith played uh, the grandmother on the Ad in the Addams Family movies. And the two of them had a little kid. And this kid had to be, uh, gee, I would say maybe four or five, something like that, six maybe. And we went to a, a, a big kind of countercultural meeting at uh, a college here in New York City. And uh, they brought their kid with them. And the kid was sitting right there next to me. And the discussion we were in was on pornography. And to show what pornography was all about, somebody decided to show a porno film. And now I've got the perfect answer to the question we've always asked, what would happen to a child if he was confronted with porn? Right? No. Halfway, halfway through the thing, the kid looks over at Judith and says, what are those people doing? And his mother, in a very wise and hip fashion, says, they're having fun. And he says, I'm bored. I'm going to the lobby. <laughs> he gets up and leaves. <laughs> so, well, he might have been embarrassed. No, he didn't no. To say it. He wasn't embarrassed at all. This kid was not embarrassed. Uh, I mean, his parents, part of their thing was they get on stage naked, you know. So this kid was exposed to everything in his young life. And, you know... Porn to kids has absolutely no meaning, no reason for existence, no interest for them. At what age? Uh, he was, uh, I think, I think he was maybe he was six, seven, somewhere around in there. You know, in that, in that. Uh, Just a couple of years away from having it mean everything to you. Oh, of course, <laughs> and, and saying, where can I get more of that? You know. Uh, 
But uh, that uh, that kind of answered my question about how does porn affect the young mind, you know? And I I don't think that kid grew up screwed up, you know. Uh, you know, a lot of it is uh, you tell the you know the parents tell the kids, Hi, Jeff. you can't have that, yeah. and what you can't have, you want. Uh, that's you know usually what yeah. happens, whether you understand it or not. Yeah. Uh, oh, is my fan interfering at all? I have no idea. My my fan's on all the time, so I is it interfering? I, I don't hear no. your fan. Okay, if you don't hear her, that's I, good. I didn't know you had a fan. All I right. thought you had nothing but enemies. Thank you very much. I'll be here all <laughs> week. Uh, oh, here comes Tony. God, what are we going to do? I, I, I only have those enemies on your face. We're, we're one person short of a full house here. Jeez almighty. Hello, Tony. Hey, I was enjoying that story with the actor you're talking about. With the what? The uh, guy was in Poltergeist, too. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, he, uh, he, he played the really creepy guy. Amy here see Cotton Club? I actually and went. I there, actually right? went on set there. Oh, really? Yeah, I had a friend when I was uh, I was in college. She got to know one of the transportation uh, supervisors on the set, and uh, he got us on the set, and we got to meet uh, Coppola. Yeah. And uh, Hines, Gregory Hines. Oh, yes. He's the dad. Yeah. Remember. Yeah, that was a, a, a really cool looking set. I mean, that Cotton Club set was just like, I was amazed by it. It was very cool. The movie I didn't care for. I liked the movie. I came to really like it after a while. There are some great moments. The ending, which is an all singing, dancing ending, you know, is, is I, I think is a brilliant piece of work on Coppola's part. But that whole thing, that whole movie was rife with. Uh, uh, I think some guy got murdered doing it. I mean, it, it, it was bad money involved in it. Uh, it mm. was it was uh, an ugly situation. Um, and, my only huh? my only claim to fame was I used to date a girl uh, that lived on the corner of Fillmore and Broadway, yeah. and her apartment looked into Coppola's backyard. It was right next door, and he, he had a bunch of antique street lamps in his backyard. It was a really nice backyard. But do you do you remember uh, that house that he had on uh, Broadway? No, not Florida? at all. No, oh, well, that's yeah, that was uh, was really nice. But uh, so, yeah, I could look into his backyard. Can you imagine well, this is the ultimate <laughs> Phil. Phil trying to worm his way into everything we talk right. about. I never you know? saw. Him. Oh, I saw his lamps in the back of his yeah. yard. Yeah, <laughs> that's what I saw. Uh, yeah. I would like to meet. The only thing I really know. The only thing I really know about Coppola is we shook his hand and we got in because under the guise of bringing him lunch, a dozen White Castle hamburgers. He ate White Castles, Coppola? Yeah, he loved White oh, Castles. God, I like him more. So we, 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 we brought him his lunch. My, oh, oh my. That, uh, that, uh, that's a good story. That's a good story. Uh, but anyway, uh, uh, that, that how, do, how did we get to Cotton Club? What was I... Are you were talking about um, it's from the theater? And he oh, oh the they, and he club. was in the picture. Yeah. He he played. Uh, uh, he was a killer, and he just had this very spooky face, so it it played well. If you ever see the movie again, you'll know who I'm talking about. Yeah. Was Richard Gere in it? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, I think I did see it a while ago. You're right, Alex. Diane oh, Ladd. Different type of movies. What? He always does different type of movies, Coppola. Well, there was one thing about Coppola that I always admired was he never did, for the most part, never did the same movie twice. You know, every movie looked different. You couldn't, if you, if you want to, you can do a parody on a Spielberg film. You can do a parody on a lot of these directors and their styles. You can't do a parody of Coppola because every one of his films was so different from the other. Uh, the only time he ever kind of had pictures look alike is, of course, when he did all the Godfather films, which he wanted to make them look alike. And um, and Cotton Club, which was a little in the Godfather vein, if it he didn't had want to make the Godfather. You know, he's got he had to make the Godfather to get money for another film or to get backing for another. I film. think. I like well, here's that. what I heard: he didn't want to do Godfather three. He didn't want to do Godfather one. Really? Yeah, he did not want to well, do you, that movie. You know that what? Was, he was on Howard Stern and interviewed Howard Stern one day, and he was saying that. It's not a movie he wanted to make. He, he and it, they had no idea it was going to be what it became. 
and he made it to appease people that allowed him then to go do what he wanted to do. I don't remember all the specifics. I think there but. was another reason why they wanted him as director, and that oh. was that the the mob here in New York was putting pressure on Paramount to hire nothing but Italians in the movie. Oh, How they got away with. Uh, uh, Sonny Corleone, he was played by a Jew. I have no idea, but yeah. they managed to get that one under the uh, under uh, the wire. But uh, the, so they had to find themselves an Italian director, and Coppola was the best Italian director they knew. And so I guess they just threw a lot of money at him and made him an offer. Hey, if you do this, we'll let you make five movies or something, or four movies or whatever. Was it? Was his financial problems stemming from Apocalypse Now and the overruns? And, uh, uh, yeah. 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 Uh, yes, Mike. Your mic isn't on, Mike. Oh, that runs. <laughs> Magic Mike. Yeah. Mike the Mime. Okay, there you go. Yeah. What I understand was when Coppola did the film, he did, there's something about the script that the head of the mob did not, you know, say it was insulting to the Italian people. That's what I heard. And he had to hire a certain amount of percentage of Italians in that yeah, movie. Yeah, I know. I Because I, I, here in New York, I, I, I ran up against signs that were posted looking for Italians to be in movie. They, were, wow. they literally wanted to hire, yes. they went through like uh, uh, Little Italy, uh, recruiting yeah. people so as extras you and so on. you change your name to Bennett Roney? No, no. I was on. I, I was on the set of uh, of Godfather Two because they did it yeah. down in Alphabet City here in New York City, and they uh, they they painted the wall. You know, painted old signs on the walls and things like that, and they had all the false fronts, like for the church and so on. And uh, the reason they did it there is it was the one place they could shoot, and shoot down just all the way down a whole bunch of streets and. All the buildings looked old, and uh, uh, they allowed people like myself and whoever at night when they weren't shooting to walk through the set. They just let everybody in, said, "Hey, walk around, enjoy yourself." You know, so that was one of my memories from living in New York was being on the Godfather Two set, um, and it was it was terrific. And it was down. I eventually moved down near close to there. I think it was like Eighth Street, and 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 Avenue A and B or B and C, something like that, you know. Um, but uh, I always I always appreciated Coppola because even when Coppola was bad, he was good. You know, he was interesting. Uh, he did a film called One from the Heart. It was entirely done on a soundstage where he built Las Vegas. And uh, I, I love the look of that picture. And I love what he tried to do with it. It wasn't really great, but... It was interesting, and that was the thing about Coppola. He got really interesting at times, and, and I, so I always appreciated him as a director. You know, He doesn't direct really anymore. He's just too busy with his wine company. Yeah, he's making wine. Yeah. You know, Not a bad wine a either. He makes what we used to call a Dago Red. Well, that sounds like uh, a good one. That is the best. Dago it reminds red. me of when I was a kid, and my pe father would come home with a bottle of what he called Dago Red, and and some uh, uh, sourdough French bread from San Francisco, <laughs> and then a couple of crab that he picked up at Fisherman's Wharf for three bucks a piece, and uh, Dungeness crab, and we would just sit there and eat those. And that was that's my that's my comfort food. That's my memories of my youth. You know. Hey Alex, do you bring a uh, bring a gallon of wine? I, I, red? Yeah, it was about a gallon, maybe. I don't know. Yeah, it was a jug. <laughs> yeah. yeah, Red Mountain. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Good, good stuff. Really good stuff. But uh, uh, you know, oh, but there you go. The the uh, I just found the thing on Coppola. He didn't want to do the film, but he needed the money to finance his failing uh, countercultural studio, Zotrope. Zotrope. So Zotrope. That's, yeah. so that's why he did it. Yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, so you know, he did it, and he did it great. And then he came back, and he did The Godfather Two, which I think, in many ways, is even a better picture on certain levels. And uh, then he did uh, three, uh, because uh, you know why he did three? He is broke. I, no. 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 Maybe the wine. No. Had nothing to do with money. 
Really? He didn't. He didn't want to do it. Hi, Brian. Yeah. Uh, he, uh. he he didn't want to do it. Uh, and Paramount kept begging him to do it, and he said, no, 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 a thousand times no. And then they said, okay, if you don't want to do it, we're going to have Stallone direct it. <laughs> and he thought for a moment and went, well, if anybody's going to fuck up this picture, it's going to be me. You know, yes, Patrick. Bad as that movie is, I'm so glad that I just heard. <laughs> wait, a minute, wait a minute, hold on a second. Somebody's making a horrible amount of noise. It's It's Phil. With your mic, I'm I'm muted. You're I was muted. muted. So somebody, then it's Brian or somebody's making Brian. noise like crazy. Go ahead, go ahead, anyway, Patrick. I'm glad, as bad as that movie is, Godfather Three. Mm -hmm. I'm glad to explain that because now I think I can appreciate it that it didn't suck even worse. Well, now my question on that is: Was Mario Puzo still alive at that point? I think so, yeah. And was he part of it? Because I don't remember. Because he was part of the first two. I think he was part of it. I, I can look it up. You know. He cashed the checks. Because, I mean, that was his, you know, that, that was his books. And, and Coppola with his first two movies. And that's... Or Magnum Opus. Wait a minute. Uh, but, but, uh, uh, Brian, there's something... When you come on, you're just so loud, and then when you're not, there's noise. Uh, uh, let's see if I try to turn the volume down, see if that helps. Because last night when you were on Jack's show, you were so tinny that I couldn't even listen to it. I had to turn it off. See, you, you know, you gotta, you gotta be careful with the way you use your mics in the car. The rest yeah. at home, you're fine. Uh, let's see here. Uh, writers: Mario Puzo and Francis Ford Coppola. So apparently he was still alive. Uh, Brian's not using his headset. That may be the difference. Yeah. Okay. Well, even when I use my headset, sometimes it comes off as a penny. Well, now it's extremely clear. Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, but uh, 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 so Coppola did. Uh, Puzo was alive for it. I think the movie killed. It's name Mickey on the credit, but you know they make deals like that. You put your name on the credit, even though you. Contributed nothing to the story. Uh, no, the screen, the DG, the uh, 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 writers guild wouldn't allow that. Oh, really? Yeah, you have to. You have to have a certain amount of participation in a film. I mean, there's some films that uh, you know you'll find a slew of like five writers, and some of them just wrote the first draft. But because of union rules, they have to list them as one of the writers. So you know, uh, and it's high. And to tie it all in a nice bow, yeah. Mario Puzo also was uh, did the screenplay for the Cotton Club. Yes. Oh, wow. Yeah, he did. You're right. absolutely right. So you see? Check it out. Stuff you didn't know, folks. That's what you get by watching us, listening to us. Learn something new every goddamn day. Huh? Yeah. 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 So you learn something new every goddamn and, and, day. And by the way, let me add that this is information you'll never, ever need either. You well, know, that's the best kind. Huh? You're the right. Best kind that's of the best kind of information. The information you will never need. In borrowing conversation or aspiring to engage in pillow talk with that special someone. You want to woo with all the bullshit knowledge you have acquired here on Gap. I don't want bullshit. to. I don't want to bring him up too early, but you know, I don't think Trump will ever have a trivia question in his yeah. name. Not unless it involves him somehow. Yeah, well, like, no, but I mean, it, 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 yeah, but I mean, it, it, I can't think of a trivia question I would ask about Donald Trump. No, oh, then that nothing, a, there's nothing trivial about him. <laughs> it, there's nothing trivial about him, exactly. But anyway, so, uh, um, uh, you know, Coppola is one of my favorites, definitely. Um, and Scorsese, when he was on Target, I think was right up there. You know, and he, they're both Italians. It's interesting see, that Italians make very good filmmakers. See, our guineas aren't that. We may not be the brightest, but we can shoot a movie. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you go, you go to the guy, you go to the Italian filmmakers like Fellini and Victoria De Sica and people like that. You know, you're talking about some of the best directors that ever lived. My favorite, Sergio, Le Sergio Leone. Oh, you like Sergio Leone? Tony, leave the, the guy, guy wants, right? to Cannoli. Right? Well, what, what, who are you going to shoot with cannoli? Yeah. 
But, but you know, again, have a little snack on the way. But out. Sergio Leone, I it think, was such a great line too. Uh, Sergio Leone may be one of the greatest directors of all time. I mean, he, he's associated uh, with Getty uh, Westerns, right? Well, the, but his best picture, in my opinion, the one that I just love, is Once Upon a Time in America. Oh yeah, that was good. You which is all that. about Jewish gangsters. Yeah. Uh, I've seen bits and pieces of it. I liked it. I just never had the time to it, sit it's, down and watch it's, it. It's you have to see the full version. Don't see the cut down version. Yeah. The thing is yeah. four hours and fifty minutes, three hours and fifty minutes long. Yes, Patrick. Oh, I was going to ask you a question. It's an annual movie for me. I watch it every year. I mean, it it just oh, I yeah. not bother one and two. I I got to see those at least once a year. Once upon a time in America, you're talking about. Once Upon a Time in America and Godfather 1 and 2. Right. Those, I see those at least once a year. And Once Upon a Time in America, I remember catching on network television probably 20 years ago, just part of it. And I stopped watching it because it was so good. I wanted to see the entire thing. I went to the video. I've stuff, done that too. And uh, it was like two or three tapes. I don't remember what it was. But, yeah, it was like four hours of just, it was like eating uh, a seven-course meal, and it was just perfect. I, I, I did not have anything wrong with that film. Yeah, uh, it is uh, It is almost a perfect film, if you watch the, the, whole, the full version, not the one that was edited by Paramount because they didn't like the final cut. They finally did release the final cut in later years. What was the name of that again? Once, Once Upon a Time, time in America. America. I just no. looked it up. I Once have never America. seen it. You, yeah, William Forsythe. Yeah, yeah, you, you, you would, I think William. you would really like that film, Rob. You would really uh, like I, it. I, I don't know sure. But there, there, there's Amazon. one scene. There's one scene I love in that film, and it, it, the, it starts out with all these gangsters as kids and how they started out, and th that's maybe the, the, the most heartfelt part of the film. And there's this one scene with this kid who wants to make it with this girl. And she says, I want a Charlotte Russe. And you know, Charlotte Russe is a pastry. So the kid takes whatever money he's got and he goes out and you know, buys a Charlotte Russe and there's a scene of him sitting on the stairwell in this tenement waiting for her to come out and she's inside with her mother who by the way, was played by George Costanza's mother uh, Estelle, whatever her name is, and uh, uh, not Getty. Uh, that that's another woman. That that was from the Golden Girls. Uh, Estelle. Uh, well, anyway, and and he starts. He gets just takes a little bit of the pastry and puts it puts it to his tongue, and before he's through, he's eating the whole fucking thing, and he doesn't wind up getting laid, and it's a, just a beautiful scene, you know, uh, and and Leone was a slow director. Everything was slow. Everything was deliberate. Everything was moving, you know. And there's one shot of these kids walking across the street being framed by the Manhattan Bridge in back of them. It's one of the greatest shots ever in the history of movies. Leone was just he was unbelievable. He was just unbelievable. And then he died. Oh. You know. Hey, a friend of mine gave me a movie to watch. Uh, I don't know. I never heard of it, and I don't know if it's any good. It was called The Gods Must Be Crazy. Oh, that's a stupid I, picture. Really? Yeah. Okay. It says something falls down. From Everybody the loved that movie for some reason. I, it was a big It was a big hit, hit, but I could never see it. I never liked it. I thought it was just, you know, it was a cheaply made film that mm -hmm. uh, people tried to invoke certain images upon I, I never liked it no um, no no don't let's not even talk about that movie in the same tone as leone right. <laughs> yeah well i was just wondering if i was trying to get a critique because i couldn't find it on netflix and uh there might be a reason yeah yeah and if you want to see the best short film ever made uh, once upon a time in the west the first about eight minutes of that film it's the best short film ever made and it's just all these guys waiting for a train to come, and they're all the mean gangstery guys. And you got to watch it in widescreen because of the way he frames everybody in it. And it's just, it's just, Leone was brilliant. 
He was just absolutely brilliant. Mm. And people for years kind of like dismissed him. Ah, that guy does the spaghetti westerns, right? Well, oh, I like the spaghetti westerns, though. Well, they the, weren't, uh, they weren't uh, really. I mean, that was demeaning them by calling them spaghetti westerns. They were probably some of the greatest westerns ever made. You know. That's because they were filmed in Italy. I, yeah. So, you know, I, I, I use it as a term of endearment. I, I always enjoyed it. Every time, every, every once in a while it's on, I, I'll sit there and watch it. Yeah. Uh, Man With No Name series saga with Clint Eastwood. Jeff's been quiet, so I'm going to ask him, have you seen any of, the, of Leone's pictures, uh, Jeff? Are you familiar with them? I, th I think I have, uh, particularly uh, some of the, what I call the Italian spaghetti. Uh, yeah. Movies. And they were terrific because... From a cowboy perspective, they were so broad. Remember that? Yeah, and they were also they were also gritty. I mean, the, the yeah. cowboys these cowboys weren't clean. You know, they didn't wear uh, you know they boots and you know they no they all looked like they had been r r rode hard as it were and, and put away wet and put away <laughs> wet and the and, and, and the towns were all kind of like you know. There's one scene in the beginning of uh, The Good and the Bad and the Ugly where they're showing this town, but just a, a, it's a wisp of a town. It's got like maybe two, or maybe it's just a home or whatever. But for some reason, in the middle of showing this wide vista of this house on this street, he, in the distance, has a dog walking across it. Now, you know he had them walk and get that dog to cross the road. I mean, exactly. otherwise, somebody would say, get that dog out of here. He's ruining the shot. But he put the dog in there, and the dog makes it. You know, it just sets up the loneliness and the, the solitude of, of where you are. Man was, part of all, man was brilliant. Was, the man was just brilliant. Yeah. My grandfather was real into these kind of westerns. Yeah. So, yeah. So. yeah. By the way, we have... You know, I very seldom have to say the same. We do have a full house in case nobody paid attention. Phil yeah. used to be the guardian of the gates, you know. I, I gave you one of these. Yeah. Now, Tim, how are you doing? I'm doing real good. Yeah? It's been a nice summer. It's been a nice summer. Yeah. Full Except of for Washington scandals. Well, that, that. that's your hobby. Uh -oh. That's your hobby. Washington's your hobby. Absolutely. Yeah. In case people and, don't know what... In case people don't, Bannon's up next. In case people don't know which one of these guys is talking, he's the guy with the picture of the telephone. Does Phil know why I can't show my face? Yeah, you're wanted in 39 you states. Don't want to uh, no, I'm wanted by the the, the, the nine million people that have dial up, but we're, <laughs> we're actually a progressive sleeper cell. But yeah, we're not supposed to tell anybody. So okay, but that, you, you heard that, about that, Bannon, that, didn't you? What about well, no. him? Uh, well, Big Master stepping up to the plate like John Kelly is, and Big Master has th fired three people from the NSC that were close to Bannon. Yeah. So now there's rumors that Bannon may be on her way out. It, it may end up being a McMaster slash Kelly show. Is Kelly Bannon? called uh, uh, Sessions to say that he doesn't have to worry about his job. Yeah. Is that. Bannon so like uh, I sent a tweet out saying that. Uh, Jared and the Trump kids have hired a new day nurse for uh, the old man. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. So uh, yeah. If, if it wasn't for Bannon, Trump wouldn't have been elected. I know, you but know? we're not. They're not in a campaign now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you got to remember Stephen, the Stephen Miller show today, the press conference. Oh yeah, I saw. Just, I watched it's that. Just unbelievable. I watched that where he got. He literally got into about a ten-minute argument with a guy, a reporter from CNN. Yeah, Jim Acosta. Yeah, and he, and he said he he called him. You know what he did? He, you're one of those New York elitists. That was yeah. his yeah. argument back, and it was yeah. all about it was all about immigration, and uh, uh, Acosta was simply saying, hey. You know, don't you think that these ideas that are being put forward are uh, are a bit uh, against immigrants and against the immigrant nature we have fostered in this country for hundreds of years? And, uh, you know, I mean, this thing that they all have to speak English. And he said, and well, you're acting like these people come over here and they don't speak English. Well, some well, of them do. And Stephen Miller said, well, basically, they only want to, to let elites in the country. 
any complaint about Acosta being elite? That was so ironic. The, I think. The, the Democrats are, uh, are are look just like elitists to Republicans. Uh, wait, 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 wait a minute. Hold on a second. What's I got to do with this? Wait, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. The the party of people that are basically come from hardworking American families, working yeah. families. Wait a minute. Uh, let me finish. Mean, are being told by a bunch of people who are standing up for the elitists and the rich that. They're being snob. That we're being snobs. Are you well, out of your fucking mind? See, that's your propaganda. You say the Republicans are standing up for the elitist and the rich. They are. They are. Look, look are at the actions, not the words, Phil. Look at the actions, not the words. They stand up for working people. And uh, what uh, this situation is on immigration. If you want to emigrate to Israel, for instance, you have to learn Hebrew. Uh, and uh, yeah, I don't that's fucking Israel. This is the United States where we, for years, have had an, an immigrant tradition. How yeah, many well, people in this problem? How many, you've got a problem now. How many people? Where did your parents come from, Phil? Yeah. yeah. How many uh, people in Brooklyn, this Brooklyn? Where did their oh, yeah. where did their Where did their parents come from? I'm fifth generation American. Fifth generation American? You oh. got here at one point, and I bet you everybody on this panel wouldn't be here if those rules were in place. I wouldn't be here. Uh, you know, uh, it's just ridiculous. Come on. You can't Stephen, even stand Stephen up. Stephen Miller, just Rob, you're right. You're right, liberty. Rob. No, I, you know, what we have is a problem. We have a problem with people coming into this country and not assimilating. Well, whether it was great. Wait, 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 Phil, Phil, stop. Stop a second. Stop a second. The, the, he got his talking points today, didn't he? Yeah, the non affil <laughs> non the, the non uh, um, uh, what's the word you used? Uh, 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 Elite? Uh, no, the, the uh, oh god, no! Oh, you just, I, I'm I'm just completely out of it here now. Son of a bitch! I'm losing my powers. I should quit doing this. Uh, right, uh, when you're when you're talking about assimilation, that was yeah. it. When you're talking about assimilation, yes. Uh, uh, you know, this whole country has been nothing but assimilation and the prevention of assimilation. Right. For instance, uh, uh, the blacks in this country were never for years allowed to assimilate, even though they would have liked to have. Uh, uh, Jews in this country weren't allowed to assimilate. They had to stay in their own communities and, and, and watch out for themselves. You know, this has never been a country of great assimilation. It's been a country in which people would come in and then hang out with their own. I don't know. You know, That's if you look true. at the Jews, they, you know, most of them have intermarried. Uh, no, if you, you're talking if, about today. I'm saying years that and years, for years and years and years ago. Yeah, well, it, ta it takes time. No, but every, all I'm saying is assimilation. Come in. We have a situation now with Muslims, for instance, where they don't want to assimilate. They want Sharia law. Uh, they they want to control. No, the a very small percentage. Phil, Phil, very Phil, very Phil, very Phil, very Phil do you know any Muslims, Phil? Uh, part, say again. Do you know any Muslims? Yes. Uh huh. Do they want Sharia law? The ones I know. Yeah. yeah. Well, then you don't know any <laughs> Muslims who, no, I don't who know are, any, and, I, and, I, and I don't know any, and I don't think anybody here can say they know somebody who's a Muslim who wants Sharia law. So don't make statements like what, that. You what can't about back up. What's going on in, uh, was it Deerfield, Michigan, or Dearborn, Michigan? Uh, and a number of other communities in the, in the country where uh, the cops co can't even go into uh, those neighborhoods. And, you know, the same thing is not only happening in the U.S., it's happening in France, it's happening in Germany, it's happening in Sweden. So, you know, uh, so th this type of issue is taking place. Let me just ask you, since you're so knowledgeable on this, where is it happening in Sweden? Uh, well, look at uh, the culture, the rape culture that the... Uh, the, the rape uh, the culture? Have. Wait a minute, rape now uh, the, the Muslims have a rape culture? Yeah, they're, they're raping uh, uh, Swedish people. Uh, uh, yeah. Women, children. yeah. Oh, boy, Phil, <laughs> Phil. That's the Donald Trumpism. That's oh, fake news. You know, I don't think it's fake news. It's I mean, Well, you don't think it's, it's fake, fake news, news, but it is. Which, Anyway, yes, yes, yeah, uh, it, yes. Well, who had his hand up? First Patrick and then, Patrick. then, then Tony. Yes, Patrick. Part of what Phil is saying is correct, that there are Muslims that have raped people in different Street. countries. Mm -hmm. However, I wouldn't say it broadly because 
there's a lot of white, black, Hispanic, whatever you want, whatever creed, whatever culture in this country that rape on a regular basis and elsewhere. So I, I wouldn't generalize Muslims. I would say there might be some within the community there, but I wouldn't generalize. No, it's not a general statement. They're, what they're saying, and, and the articles that I've read, is that uh, where did it's you read them? Where, where did you where did you read them? What, what publications were they? Uh, well, you yeah, yeah, asked ask me that. Uh, the same I, publications that have a, the fake news story that they co that they uh, co uh, you know they got together with the White House. None of them had a swastika the on them, did they? <laughs> yeah. Uh, Another one had a picture of Donald Trump's cock. I'll look it up. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, it was below the fold. It was about this small, too. <laughs> All right. Well, you know what they say about small hands. You know. So. Yeah, no shit. Yeah. Tiny, tiny hands. <laughs> tiny, tiny little. Anyway. Uh, but every, every, every group goes through the exact same thing. When you come to this country, the Italians, the Germans, the Irish, all lived in the ghettos. My family lived in the ghettos in Brooklyn. When they first came here, they were the low rung on the totem pole and they were they were they were not assimilated. They couldn't speak English. I think in the mid I think in the mid 1800s, uh, Harlem or this area here uh, was a Jewish community or it started out as a Jewish community. And then those Jewish communities became black communities uh, right. because the Jews got rich enough to move somewhere else. And so right. the the so-called slums became the purview of those who had nothing. But you know you're talking about you're talking about uh, groups that you know everybody lived in a ghetto once and whatever. The ones who are an exception to that actually are the blacks in America, who actually were slaves to begin with, and so it comes out of being slaves that you know, uh, and so they they were and they have never been able to assimilate because of the color of their skin because their skin is a badge they wear constantly that prevents assimilation. So they've had it had to then create their own culture, you know, with their own music. Yes, Pat, uh, Jeff. Oh, you know what, what you were saying? Yeah. Oh, Jeff, oh, wait a minute. Uh, wait a minute. Uh, I, I should okay. go to Tony first, and then I'll go to you, Jeff. Just remember what oh. your, your thing is saying, you because uh, I did say I was going to go to Tony next. Oh. Go ahead, Tony. You know what I'm saying? Right. On the whole assimilation, it's, it's kind of like, regardless, because once you come over here, what he's saying, if people are going to branch off with the people they want to branch off with. And like Trump is trying to take credit for like, say on another tangent, on the market, like the stock market, he's trying to take credit for That's it. nothing to oh, do really, with it. What is the stock market really going to do for the poor guy who's struggling? To, well, the stock job? market isn't, isn't actually uh, that much of an indicator of anything. Uh, it's an indicator of where certain people want to place their money uh, and how much they want to spend of it. And it's a huge gambling game. That's going you know what on. I think, Alex? Uh, I think he really wants the health care to go belly up, Trump. I really think oh, he, yeah. he knew his plan wasn't going to go through. Of course, because that because he cares about America. So he uh, really wants. So this, yeah. I think he's playing this out yeah. exactly the way yeah. he wants it. Jeff, you had your hand up. Well, I have two uh, black friends that are uh, that are not black Americans. They they came from other countries. So. Yeah. They're so much yeah. unique, and uh, and, they, and one of them couldn't speak Spanish perfectly because she was from uh, Central America. Mm -hmm. But uh, anyway, the the other part is my grandfather was from Czechoslovakia, and uh, and his brothers and his mother and and and, uh, and his father, and his father came to the United States and had a great idea, was to shave off of his Jewish beard. And he comes across uh, on a ship, and uh, they won't let him in the United States. Oh, yeah, you told, you told me this one. Yeah, but keep going with it. Yeah. So he had to go some, somewhere else first, Can't right? Go back. So here's my, my grandmother with uh, four kids or three kids. And uh, luckily, they had some cousins or whatever. Yeah. Who uh, gave them a place to stay for a while, and... Uh, they were very poor. Yeah. Let's put it that way. Well, let's face it. We, we you know, uh, when it has come to immigration, we have not had the superb 
record that we should have, considering what we consider we are. We have always, land of the free, home of the brave, bring us your humble, your tired, your huddled masses, yearning to breathe free. Uh, except just don't put them in my neighborhood. Just don't put them in my neighborhood. Work by yourself. Yeah. Jeff? Yeah. Take care of it. Take care of yourself. Yeah. Is the plan. And we're a very selfish country in that respect. Yes, Mike. Jeff, I was going to ask you, when your grandparents came over from Czechoslovakia, like my grandparents came from Croatia, did they have to go to school to learn English, then pass the citizenship? I know my, um, I remember my grandmother, and she knew how to speak English with a, with a tremendous uh, Czechoslovakian accent yeah <clears throat> and she could write but her, her writing like if she wrote love she'd write l-o-v because she wasn't educated uh onto really how to write well in english so uh she would convert things uh by herself but my, it- i knew i knew four of my great grandparents none of them spoke english uh-huh none of them I had a great grandmother. Uh, she spoke Yiddish. Uh, I think maybe she spoke a few words of English, but uh, my mom communicated with her in Yiddish. But it used to be, though, my grandparents always said when they came over to this country, you had to go to school, learn English, yeah. then get your citizenship, regardless. If you didn't pass the citizenship, you're you're on your way back over. Hey, Phil. And. and- Alex. Yes, yes, Tim. We're, we're sending people back pretty quickly. But th- th- there's something that kind of tells you about how Kelly's going to run things. I did a rate of Central Americans that came here as family units mm-hmm. last week. And over half of the people they picked up didn't have criminal records and weren't the targeted people they were going after. The, the immigration agents, and this is under his command, if they see any immigrant anywhere, they're going to they're going to send them back, put them in hearings, even if they have no criminal record. Well, so, they, they uh, are. I do know they are sending back uh, any Im, I, any illegal immigrants they find who wind up in our jails. That they well, are. These are doing. just ones they were looking for, and they were checking papers for just when they were looking for these other families and picked up, you know. A, over 70, over 50 almost 70 percent of the people they picked up yeah. were not were not criminals and they weren't part of this group they were looking Rob for. has his hand up so they go to him legal? next but I heard something the other day no, they weren't the, the, I, I, I heard I heard something the other day you know there's a whole the whole legend about Anne Frank you know and this diary she wrote and all of that uh, and actually who was it uh, I think it was one of the producers of the Carson show who said, because he grew up in Europe, that he went to school with Anne Frank, Frank and that she Frank. was a real cunt. Uh, <laughs> he always loved to tell that story. He said she was, everybody hated her. She was just a snobby the, the kid. Cor- she was one of those kind of kids everybody hated. And was she, it but, Cordova? But, huh? De Cordova? Wasn't he there? De Cord- I think it was De Cordova. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. yeah. I I think. If not him, it was... It was uh, uh, the guy who went to the Letterman show. I can't remember. I'll find out from Shecky when I ask him next. But anyway, anyway, he said that the interesting thing about Anne Frank was the only reason she got caught, they went in that house to get people on tax evasion. It wasn't. They weren't looking for Jews. It was tax evasion. And when they went up to the attic, they found the Jews huddled there. But yeah, there was somebody said, hey. The Jews are no, upstairs. No, but it wasn't like it wasn't like they were out looking for Jews that day. They were actually trying to get these people who lived in the house on tax evasion. Yes, Rob. I have a what might be a very basic, dumb question, but we've talked about all of these different waves of con- of people that have come to this country. The Germans, yeah. I think, were first before the Irish, right, and then the Italians, and all of these different. Why is it that those people no longer come here? Why is it that there like there were waves of Italians and then waves of Germans and waves? There was, of- there was a famine in Ireland. Yeah. Uh, there was uh, oppression in Germany. Uh, the Muslims, there was yeah. oppression, especially of Jews in Russia. 
you know. Uh, Everybody, all the refugees are leaving and going to Canada. They're almost at their quota in Canada from people leaving the United States now. So we're seeing that happen here now. Uh, if, what, what, if, if, what, if, what, I, before, if I had some place, if I was starting out again and I was young, yeah. uh, I don't think I'd want to live in this country. I think there are a lot better places in this world to live, you know, where uh, where where the people are taken better care of and where uh, art is more respected, for instance, as an example, than here. But we're kind of a dumb, kind of klutzy country. And we've also become a very selfish country. And we've, we've, we've become the worst you can possibly imagine. I don't and, know if I'd want to live here. I would actually probably go somewhere else. I'd go there now, only I'm just so old now that, I, I, you know, it's, it's, it's... What about the corruption? The corruption, for instance, in Italy. What about uh, you know, the corruption here, no, Phil? The rampant corruption here. Other government, you know... Uh, and what, every, every six wait, months, wait, wait, no, wait, I'm, I, yeah. you know, how can we you bring up corruption <laughs> somewhere else when you fail to realize the corruption we have here? Just think, though, Alex, they get rid of them. If we had a chance to do that, yeah, it'd be honest. Corrupt people. <laughs> what? We elected those corrupt people. Oh, not, not, you see, you always blame everything that way. All I'm saying is, is that when you talk about corruption, I mean, come on. We, 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 this country has thrived on corruption. True. We let the lobbyists they, they run the whole country. Yeah, yeah. Oh, exactly. And and they and they're or in Alec. Like, you know about Alec, right? Not Alex, but Alec. Alec. Alec? American Alec. Legislative Exchange Committee or Council. They, they write half the bills that favor the corporation. State to state. It, it gave us private prisons. Yeah. Well, yeah, but you fail to, to you, complain Clinton. the people that are actually taking the money from these people and and putting that legislation through. And those are the senators and, and congressmen that we have sent to Washington to represent us. And uh, yeah, that's why we want single payer, because we're not getting our tax money for a lot of people. Year in and year out, the same people. You know, you got guys that have been there 30, 40 years. When are we going to wake up? Yeah, yeah. Well, uh, don't let Trump stay there thirty years, please. No, please he'll be great. Trust me. He's not going to make. He's not going to make it to eight. Thing I, thing I, thing I, 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 I actually believe he will die in office this term. Two months. Give him two months. But here's my question, to Phil. If I was married to Melania, I'd, I'd, I'd probably get, you know, uh, have a heart attack too. <laughs> Why would, that be? Why would that be? Why would that be? I'd be banging her a night and oh, day. Oh, yeah. Do you think oh, she really, you, you, feel, you really Everybody feel she's yet. fucking that fat fuck any longer? No, I but I, 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 all right. Oh. Yes. <laughs> By the way, Jeff had his hand up a while back. Do you have something, Jeff? Uh, Jeff, you're muted. Turn, turn Jeff, your we on. can't hear you. you were, you're muted. I'm sorry. I, hey. I didn't have anything to say. Oh, because you raised your hand, and I... I, I maybe I did, but I stopped. Oh, Change you, my mind. You stopped. You figured it was too late to do but, something about it. Can yeah. I say something to Phil? Yeah. He He's right. People are fed up with the politicians. But that's why, because the people feel like they haven't gotten their money's worth. I'm not fed We're up with the poli- I'm not fed up with the, with all the politicians. I think there's some good politicians. I think but there's some people there really want to want to do the people's work, and I just think that uh, they're being bogged down by all these people who who got elected uh, in in states that we don't have anything to do with, you know, uh, and and uh, 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 they're not being able to get their job done because of those people. Yes, uh, Rock. Has anybody heard uh, or heard? I know CNN has had him on twice in the last two days. Republican Senator Flake. Yeah, Jeff Flake. Yeah, yeah he wrote a book. He's anti-Trump now. He well, he's anti-party in a lot of respects. He thinks the party fell off the wheels in the. He said we were the we were the Don't party he's up of for re-election. Well, but he's coming up out against his party. And he's and he's he's talking about how they were always the party of less government and fiscal responsibility. Then they spent out the ass in the early twenty in the early two thousands, and the message kind of morphed from 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 that to this populist message and all this. And he said the Republican Party is falling off 
you cannot have a, a, a party where populist, you know, uh, rhetoric is, is how you, you know, is a, is one of the main, uh, what do you call it of the party? Yeah. Uh, it's happening on both sides of the aisle. I tell you what, I, I, I thought it was, you know, I thought what he did was great. I, his, I want to read his book. And, uh, I, I thought his interview, I saw him twice on two different shows on CNN in the last two days. And, uh, I sent him. A, I sent him a letter. I sent him. I went on his website and sent him a letter telling him what I thought. I was like, he was you know, originally against Obamacare, though, years ago, right? Well, I, I told him. I, you know, I don't necessarily agree with his politics, but the fact that he's coming out and, and pointing out what's wrong, I think is 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 awesome. Yeah, because they've been just. They've had no. They're, they're all weaklings in the in the GOP. They're all weaklings. You can't no, just be on one side. Yeah, I think that goes on both sides. Well, that's uh, true. That's true. But we, we don't have... But Trump you see, you, right now you can't blame the Democrats for much of anything because they don't have the power to do anything. Well, they're doing a good job of uh, obstructing uh, anything Trump wants to obstructing? do. Obstructing? Well, How are they right. obstructing no, it? Uh, let, let's, 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 very, right. very, let's, let's look at the, the health care bill. Who, who obstructed the health care bill? Three Republicans. Yeah. Yeah, but there should have been, the been, been other Republican. support. Why we well, don't give them a chance? The only reason you had all those Republicans supporting the health bill is because they didn't want to be chastised by their by their betters in the in in the Senate, who uh, had a certain control over whether they get reelected or not. Right, and well, so therefore they had to, they had to go with the party. And I just, you know, I, I love the fact that a guy like uh, like McCain, like who at this point in his life feels that he has nothing left to lose, you can't not get me elected again because I probably won't even be alive to run again. Do you know, Alex, it's like a gang. What happens is when a new senator or a new congressman comes in, yeah. and as you said, the older congressmen or, and senators say, well, look, if you want a good position, if you want party money, you vote with us and therefore you will get it. If you go and you vote your conscious, uh, conscience and you vote against something, mm -hmm. then you're not going to get the money, you're not going to have the ch uh, help to get reelected, and uh, you're going to be a you know, one-term uh, one -term politician. And so what happens is, is they indoctrinate you into their gang and, and they vote as a block instead of really representing the people that sent them there. Well, <laughs> and, whole group of Republicans now who want to involve the Democrats in the health care discussion. They have and to. There's a grassroots movement to get it done. Even though Trump is against it, Trump wants to 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 continue down the avenue he, he's uh, that they've been going. But there Trump are no an avenue. Trump never had any avenue. He he just he sat back and and well, let everybody do no. waiting for the legislation to come to his desk. Why well, does he to stop it? Obamacare, period. He wanted to die. Yeah, but you All know, but here's my here's my has... question: Why isn't why isn't Trump initiating some legislation? I don't know that the president initiates. Oh, what do you call Obamacare? What do you call Obamacare? Well, yeah, Tim, uh, does the president initiate legislation, or is that done in the House and the Senate? They use they do work with their parties, and they do. They do help shape a lot of legislation. The shape. But Obama, Obama wanted the Democrats to be involved in Congress. But he went out and he gave lots and lots of town halls. They had tons of hearings. So he did his part to push the longs. Uh, Trump just wants a check mark on his list that right. Bannon has hang, hanging check. on his wall. He wants oh. to check things off. He doesn't right. even understand health care. doesn't understand it. And he well, doesn't I, care what the bill says, as long as it's a repeal well, well, he Well, uh, yeah. let, me, let me go to uh, Patrick, because he's got his hand up. Patrick? Uh, I, I agree with Phil that uh, Trump has done nothing but sit back. And I, I think Trump has been full of shit with wanting to get rid of Obamacare. I think in yeah, but somebody is rattling something, and then it cuts his mic down. So if you're, if you, whoever's rattling, uh, just uh, turn, mute your mic, would you please? Yeah, I'd appreciate it. Now, go ahead, Patrick. Um, I think Trump is trying to play to the all right that want to get rid of Obamacare, and mm -hmm. he doesn't give a shit one way or the other. Much like what had been said here, 
he hasn't done anything to push it like Obama did with his own initiative, or even when Hillary was doing it as a uh, first lady right. out there. She did more for Hillary care, whatever you want to call it, than uh, Trump is just sitting there waiting for things to show up. And he, and he did that throughout, um, even while he was campaigning, he never really did anything for any of uh, the people that were running for Senate or for Congress. I mean, even though he was the nominee, I, I don't think he really has a party that he aligns himself with. Right now, he's with the Republican, to that how he knew he would be able to get elected. And that's it. And I think it's aligned with the party, all right, the Communist Party. <laughs> That's <laughs> true. <laughs> well, that used to be the, uh, the the favorite party of the Democrats just a few years ago. Well, yeah, we're, we're, the, oh, yeah, we're the commie pinkos still. Right. I'm a commie pinko. Yes. I don't think I most know. people know so, that Hillary got a bill passed and children had health insurance for decades. You're right. You're absolutely correct. What did come out of that was ch it child. Was child. Be, everybody thinks she was a big failure. That was one of the greatest things ever done for children. She saved thousands of, ch of children's lives. Yes. Uh, Jeff? We should all remember that Trump was a, a Democrat before he became a Republican uh, for many, many years. So yeah. He and may go back. That was the John Bircher probably. Well, no, he? I think, I think oh, he, actually, he, actually, he actually became a Republican because he thought he had a better chance of getting a nomination for president being a Republican than being a Democrat. His, it, all, the only reason he's a Republican is for pure expediency. Yes, Patrick? I, I think if someone were to sit down and quiz him without any of his advisors with him and just say different policies, not say whether they're Democrat or Republican, but just say this policy, this policy, what is this policy? Is this a Democrat or a Republican idea? Mm -hmm. He wouldn't have any fucking idea one way or the other. He would say, I like this one, I don't like this one, I like this, I don't like this. And it might come out to be 50-50. It could come out to be more to the Republican side, more to the Democrat. But I don't think he knows where what he's supposed to be. He he's just likes to flow. He was able to win as a Republican. That's what he is. He's and a man without any ideology. He just is a man who wants power. Exactly. He wants, exactly. He wants to implement what he promised on the campaign trail, no matter how ugly it is. And that's what me, Stephen Miller was just saying today. Let me, We're implementing yeah. this because that's what he promised on his let campaign. Me, let, 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 let me bring up something here. You know, to begin with, today the, uh, uh, the Dow hit an all-time high. Uh, mm -hmm. And uh, it, 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 what? 22,000. Over, over that. Yeah, and then yeah. did it dip back under? I think it dipped back yeah. under, but it, but it it went over. Uh, and of course, you know, Trump's going to sit around and say this is my doing. Now, let's be very honest about it. He had nothing to do with it. And the reason what? I'm saying, wait a minute, let me finish. Come on, Phil, can I just I finish a statement? I well, I wasn't looking at it. I was thinking about what I was saying. Oh, okay. Huh? Uh, it, 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 he's only been in office for, what, six months. That's hardly a, a decent amount of time to affect any kind of legislation or anything that would affect the stock market. The stock market has gone up because the stock market, and, and believe me, it's going to fall. You know, just as sure as it goes up, it's going to fall. Those are guarantees you get. That, that was what I was going to say. What goes up must go down. Yeah. And eventually uh, it's really it's it's much higher than it should be for the values uh and, uh, and it's going to crash and, and and the question is and it's always a question i like to ask is so what does that mean to the guy who's out of work you know what does that mean to the guy who doesn't own stock and never could afford to have enough money to to, to have stock you got a slap back but no i'm getting somebody's got their speaker up oh yeah uh you know, what it means is that when people feel wealthy, when, they, uh, when uh, the, the, the ones that either are investing or don't invest but get a feeling of prosperity because they see prosperity. Oh, in, that's fucking bullshit. It, 
Uh, well, tell, 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 tell the people, tell the people who were standing outside that. Oh, well, well, let me, uh, you, you know, uh, uh, tell those people who were standing outside of the Amazon fulfillment center today, hoping to get one of the what? How many? Five thousand jobs or something? Fifty. Fifty. thousand jobs that Amazon is making available that life is wonderful and that they feel that they're prosperous. Didn't say you like, know what you should do, Alex, next time? Go to your a, iPhone and ask how many of those people standing what? outside own Amazon stock. I bet you they're fucking money. Well, of course they don't have any. No, but Phil thinks they have a sense of wealth because everybody else is making money on Wall Street. Come on. Shake the hey, other Alex, I think Phil is right to one extent. It used to be when the American dream was alive yeah, that you let like the rich think. people get away with stuff because you thought you might be rich someday. And how? Well, that, but, but no, I, I know I'll go. I'll go you a step further on that one, Tim. That's the premise of how America keeps its people in line. Is exactly. is the promise that uh, if you work hard enough, you can become a millionaire. If you work you hard enough, if too. if you work Lottery hard economy. enough, you know you can do this. If you work hard enough, you can do that. And that's the bone they keep holding out there so you'll keep slaving and working for cheap wages and everything mm -hmm. else because you want to be part of that american dream yeah you're doing a little mime work over there on the part of uh on the part of brian i keep making uh, that hat box because i may have to get yeah, no, health no, insurance no. In the no. but you 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 know they've been <laughs> they, they they hold, they hold, so wait a minute they hold they, the they hold that bone in front of you as a <laughs> promise that you're going to you know you're going to be able to be, be you rich out of this I thing didn't and say, let me finish can i finish what i'm saying um, damn yeah, it I interrupted. You, you, you interrupted Everybody interrupts I forgot me. What okay, I mean. go ahead. Well, you you talk all the. Uh, of course, they interrupt you because you're talking all the time. <laughs> because you made a good point, Alex. He's getting upset. You you need to get some talk. All I'm saying is is it's it's it, it it's the bone they put in front of every American, and every American sits there. Well, I'm going to get rich. Jen. I'm going to grow up, and I'm going to make a million bucks, and. You know, and then they 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 hold out as a as a an example of those people who you can be. You know, the Beyonces of the world for the black yeah. people, and uh, for yeah. for you know, and other people who uh, the Steve Jobs of the world, and so on. But that's just a small, minor amount of people. The real people never see that kind of money. They're going to work their lives, and at the end of it, they're going to have slaved all their life at cheap wages to do a job somewhere like folding hat boxes. Exactly. And, and they're going and to they're going to lie there on their deathbed and, <laughs> and say what? Even the people that worked at GM lost their pension. I mean, not and, 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 and they're going to they're going to lie there on their deathbed and say what Marlon Brando said he was going to say on his deathbed. What the fuck was this all about? Exactly. Well, I could have been a contender. How good was Brando? I don't know Yes, yes, Rob. And so that Trump doesn't uh, celebrate and get too high on his hog, the stock market has hit an all-time high in 30 of the last 54 months. So how long was he present for those months? Yeah. So it's it's, uh, it's six not a, so. it's nothing to we'll do with Donald Trump. Trump. It, it's plus. you know it's it's not you know it's not because of him yet. I mean, Come I'd on, say in another on, two or three years, he could lay claim to that if he passes some legislation and does some work that helps that along. Uh, but he can't claim it right now, you know. No. But what what's the market? That's what he does. I mean, Phil, wouldn't you agree that the reason it's, part of the reason it's up is because there is a certain settling of everything because Trump did get elected and now we have a president. We know who he's going to be so that whether you like it or not. Uh, we have some kind of answers to that long lingering question that was going on for two fucking years. No, I just think that there's a lot of foreign investment uh, that uh, because there's so much uh, unrest in the rest of the world that there's uh, a lot of foreign investment coming in uh, and uh, and uh, that's driving up the prices not only of real estate, but of the stock market. Mm -hmm. Yes, Mike. Stock market might go up for a while. Then eventually it's going to get weak and start losing slowly. You know, it's going to go go down. Watch. It always happens. No, it goes it up, goes it, up goes it goes down, it goes up, it goes down. Yeah. But it's going to go down for a while. The uh, price of Venezuelan oil, that's gone. It's, got, it's, it's going to go up. There goes the price of your gas. It's going to go up again. Yeah. It's gone up already. It's back up to 50 bucks a barrel. 
Is that well, because, it, is that because of Venezuela? Partially. Yeah. But the OPEC nations are now starting to get together, and uh, they're not worried so much about the glut in the marketplace, and they're starting to cut back on production a little bit. That's yeah. helping. Let me ask Scott this question. Scott, if we always invade countries that have oil, why haven't we invaded Venezuela? Oh, yeah. Oh, you're trying to It's too hot. <laughs> <laughs> too humid. We don't need a great. We need a great car. No, we always go after. We always go uh, you go to war against countries that have oil, either going through them or coming out of them, and uh, you know, just kind of makes you wonder why we haven't tried to invade Venezuela. I mean, after all, it's a terrible country. At least we'd be doing the people a favor down there. You well, know. isn't that uh, where the strong man Hugo Chavez came from? Yeah, well, I mean, uh, they seem to always get bad, uh, bad dictators. I don't know what that's about. Is is Brian asleep? No. I'm oh, oh, okay. I'm just. Wondering. I'm listening. You, you, kind, of, you, you, you kind of. I don't know. You were looking comatose <laughs> there. Uh, I got something for him to do at midnight. What? There are two blockbusters. I just saw Dave Chappelle and Joe Walsh are going to be on Colbert. Oh, yeah, but you know what the you, 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 you know what the, you know what the problem is there. You have to watch Colbert. Well, well I know, I know, but I don't normally watch him. But I want, I'd like to see Dave Chappelle. I'd really like to see what Joe Walsh has to say. Yeah. You know, because we have the Kid Rock running for Senate. Oh. So I'm going to have to yeah. get out and demonstrate here in Michigan. Now. Okay, we've now gone from a full house to what? What did I say? A royal flush. A royal flush. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I just want to say a that a Amy, who does the show after us, has just joined us. <laughs> yes, Amy. I just want to say that we kind of have invaded Venezuela. We just haven't done it openly. Wasn't that the uh, English uh, and uh, the uh, what's the name of those islands that start with an F? Um, the Falklands? Uh, no, no, no. But I don't mean the That's Falklands. No. Wait, wait, wait a minute. Wait, Jeff, I, Jeff wait a minute. hold on a second. Jeff, Jeff what did you say? The, the, the Falkland Islands were, were owned by Argentina, but England always made claim that they owned those islands. Right. And therefore, they came out there just to take care of them. Yeah. So was it Argentina that they fought, or yes. was yeah. it the, yeah. uh, Venezuela? Yeah, no, Argentina. It was Argentina. Argentina. Venezuela had nothing to do with it. Different uh, okay. country. And uh, a they friend of from Argentina... But was in England at the time, and he was afraid, and he couldn't get an airplane ticket back to Argentina. So he came to the United States, and he stayed with us for uh, three months or something. Oh, like really? That. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Uh, so what what I was getting at was we we did coups in Venezuela. Yeah. So it wasn't a... An invasion, so to speak, as Not much as it was just a backdoor takeover. That's how Kissinger got his first uh, came to fame. Was he orchestrated? Was it Chile or Peru? Who was it? The orchestrated Chile. takeover. Chile. It was Chile with Augusto Pinochet, right? Yeah, Pinochet. Yeah. I couldn't think of his name. And we basically we we got rid of a uh, democratically elected. Uh, well, you got rid, rid of Allende. We did the same thing in Iran. Uh, Salvador too. Allende right. was a. Uh, was a communist, but he was a democratic communist, and he right. wanted to bring a full democracy to 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 uh, Argentina. What was it? Uh, Chile. Chile. And uh, so we didn't like the idea of a communist running a country as a democracy because what kind of an example would that be for the American people? They had always been told that communism wasn't democratic, and now somebody was going to actually have a communistic democracy, which is very possible. Communism is an economic form. We democracy. Well, can I finish oh, again? Fuck you. Uh, <laughs> Jesus. Now I, I uh, forgot what I was going to say. Go ahead, Phil. Say whatever you had to say that was so damn important. Huh? No, go ahead. He was just calling President Obama a communist. A communist? Which, which, Obama was the furthest thing from a communist. Ask a, Brian. A, a, Brian, a, was President Obama a communist? Despite <laughs> what co-workers at my former place of employment will tell you who are a bunch of old, white, prejudiced cocksuckers. No, he wasn't. <laughs> tell us how you really feel. Yes, Mike, you, your hand's up. Oh. 
Yeah, okay. Told you how was it mm-hmm. was it wasn't Argentina also the United States had a little something to do to kick out the uh, the government there? Yes. Well, the the the, 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 po- the point Argentina. I was trying to make uh, was that in the United States, the, the you know com- you can't have a communist democracy because communism is an economic form. It's not a a way of the relationship of the government to the people. Uh, you could, that would be totalitarianism. So you could have a communist totalitarian state, and then you've got yourself a dictatorship and so on. You can also have a communist uh, a democracy, something that Americans were never told could exist. We were always told that somehow communism was also a uh, was not an economic form. And uh, so we went there down there, and the we, we literally had him overthrown and killed. Salvador Allende died and was killed by the United States of America. And we put in Pinochet, one of the worst dictators in the history of that part of the world. You know, that's what we always do. Did Pinochet die also? Yes, he died eventually, but not before he wreaked havoc on that nation. Did they go after for war crimes too, I believe? Now tell me, Phil, where I'm wrong about what I just said. Uh, I don't think you're wrong, uh, but I did feel that um, that uh, Obama was a democratic communist, or and and or maybe he claims to be. You claim he's a socialist, but uh, based on the, he pro- I, 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 I think I think Amy just Peter Pan's is the first step to communism. That's what the Democrats want is first they, you know, they, they, they give you a bunch of programs and they and they think it's, it's for the social good. But all they're really looking to do is overthrow uh, America as we know it. Yeah, because that's <laughs> what communism Brian. is all about is overthrowing countries. Our socialist Brian, <laughs> tell us how much of a socialist Obama was. <laughs> Obama carried the jobs program, though. Uh, other than his, he was socialistic. Then what was then what was then what was Trump? Is it Trump a communist himself? No, well, Wait, you know, in his government? Yes, he is. Obama did, did Obama ever have a straight job, or uh, did, was he always yes. on the public dole? No, yes, he oh, was. He went to college. He got a job. Well, well, college, he, went, a job. He, he went to work no, for a law firm. Well, he always had a straight. He was, he, he was a professor. What does the Trump do? Does he have any government business? No. All he does is walk around with his finger up his ass going, I wish old Tom would have screw over. What about all the chances he took? I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Yeah. Wait a minute. I have to take I have to take umbrage with what Mike just said. There's no way Trump could have his finger up his ass because it's so fat it's down not. there it would get stuck and he couldn't get it out. That's why he made his <laughs> Yes, uh, Amy? I want to go back to the person that mentioned us interfering in Argentina, mm-hmm. which we did. If you remember the musical Evita, no, uh, that's Argentina. Yeah, we were ta- we right. were ta- we were talking about Chile, right? But someone else brought up we also messed around in Argentina. Well, the musical Evita is about us messing around in Argentina. I that they were elected. Something called the Monroe Yeah, but it also, it also if I'm not mistaken, it, it, part of the musical is a character, Che Guevara, and I don't think Che Guevara was in Argentina when Evita was, uh, was around. But, uh, so so I, wouldn't, I wouldn't go back and, and point to that musical as history. Well, okay? I, it's not history, but there is... Yes. How does uh, our position in the Monroe Doctrine dictate why we might interfere in... It's called uh, Manifest uh, Destiny. Right. We take what we take by the will of God. You know how we won the Afghan uh, War the first time, don't you? We never won the Afghan War, the did CIA we? The CIA went in with uh, briefcases full of money and paid off the warlords. Yes, absolutely Until correct. Until the money ran out, then they grew their poppies again. Yeah. And they didn't need us anymore. But we still we needed the we, the still, first time. we still needed oh. them for the heroin. Yes, uh, Amy. Also, Reagan during the eighties did all kinds of messing around in oh, Central yeah. America he with various dictators. Contra. Yeah. Well, if you hear that, that's the Where theme song, the ever popular yeah. da 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 theme song that we Man play. Of- 
uh, what is it called? It, it's hey. called Swing That Jazz Stick, in case anybody wondered what it's named. Phil, thank you very much. I, I yell at you, but, you know, you're a very important part of this program because without you, it would be all one-sided. Well, oh, yeah. <laughs> well, no, we have Patrick, but he's a little more on the moderate conservative side but always, and, and is always right when he says whatever he has to say. Uh, Tim, thank you so much for calling tonight. Thanks, uh, thanks to Scott, who I don't, you've hardly said a word tonight, Scott. And that's the way you like it, right? <laughs> uh, uh, I don't get mad at Phil that way. That's yeah. right. Jeff, yeah. you're terrific. You uh, Brian, you're wonderful. We love seeing you driving down the road and then eating whatever your dinner is. Uh, you're a man of habit. Uh, Mike, thank you so much. Uh, of course, Rob, always, you know, it's appreciated. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, did I say Patrick? I, yeah. Yeah, I said Patrick. And, 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 and uh, yes, uh, there he is, Tony. Thank you, everybody. Wave good goodbye. Good night. To wave goodbye. Yeah, that's a nice wave goodbye. And we'll that's see so you great. again hopefully tomorrow. Bye-bye. Okay. <laughs> anyway. Uh, let me see here. Oops. Oh, oh, there they're going. They're going. They're going. Okay, and I'll get rid of all of them here just by turning off the phone and turning off Skype so the next show can use it. Yeah. Anyway, that's it for tonight. I'm Alex Bennett. I'll be here again uh, 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 tomorrow night. In the meantime, Jack and Amy are next, and there with the insection and the uh, connections is at uh, 1 o'clock in the morning. I'll see you again tomorrow, same time, same station in life. In the meantime, as always, if you see her, tell her I love her, okay? <laughs> <laughs>